Hi guys and welcome back for another math lesson. This video will help you solve problems involving permutations and combinations. Please make sure that you have prepared your materials like pen and paper before watching this video. Solving problems involving permutations and combinations. Before jumping into solving problems involving permutations or combinations, you need to ask yourself the following question. 1. Are we dealing with a permutation or combination? Or should I ask, does the order matter? After you have identified whether the problems are permutation or combination, you need to ask yourself, is the repetition allowed or not allowed? Before we proceed with our illustrative examples, let us first try to recall the different formulas that we are using in solving permutations and combination problems. Let us start with the different formulas involving permutations. In getting the permutations of n objects where n is equal to r, or the number of objects to choose from is the same with the number of objects chosen, we are going to use the formula n factorial. When we are dealing with number of permutations of n objects taken r at a time, where n is greater than r, then we are going to use the formula n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. While in distinguishable permutations, where the number of distinct permutations of n objects of which p are alike, q are alike, r are alike, and so on, is n factorial divided by p factorial, q factorial, r factorial, and so on. Lastly, in circular permutation where the arrangement of objects is in a circular manner, we are going to use the formula n minus 1 factorial. Let us now proceed with the combination formula. The number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time is given by n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. These are the formulas that we are going to use when we are solving problems involving permutations and combinations. When dealing with some word problems involving permutation and combination, you must know some clues or hints on what the problem is all about and what formula is to be used. These clues or hints will help you understand more the problem and use the right formula and solution, like when you arrange or list things and the order is important in permutation, when you choose, select, pick, draw, or form and the order is not important in combination, when objects are alike in distinguishable permutation, and when objects are arranged in circular manner in circular permutation. Hints or clues are important in deciding an appropriate formula to be used. For you to be able to understand it better, let us have some illustrative examples. Problem number one. How many four-digit numbers can be formed using the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 6 if A, no repetition is allowed, and B, repetition is allowed? Let's start with this one when no repetition is allowed. There are four positions to be filled, so we will write four horizontal marks. On each horizontal mark, we will write the number of choices we have in filling up the said position. Since we have the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 6, that means there are four choices for the first position. After filling the first position, there are three choices left for the second position. Two choices for the third position, and one choice for the fourth position. Since we use the fundamental counting principle, we will only multiply all of them and it will give us 24. So there are 24 four-digit numbers. So for an alternate solution, let us use the formula for this problem. We are going to use the formula n factorial divided by n minus n factorial 
since n is equal to 4, we have 4 factorial divided by 4 minus 4 factorial. Evaluating this solution further, it will give us the answer 24. So that means there are 24 four-digit numbers that can be formed. It is the same with our first solution. The next question, how many four-digit numbers can be formed using the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 6 if repetition is allowed? Still, there are four positions to be filled, so we are going to write four horizontal marks. On a horizontal mark, we are going to write the number of choices we have in filling up the said position. There are four choices for the first position. After filling the first position, there are four choices also for the second position because repetition is allowed. We can choose again the number we chose in the first position. Four choices again for the third position and four choices also for the fourth position. Since we use the fundamental counting principle, we are now going to multiply each one that will give us 256. So there are 256 four-digit numbers. Now, let us try to use our formula. So the formula for this problem is P equals N raised to R, where N is equal to 4 and R is also equal to 4. Evaluating this solution further, it will give us the answer 256. So there are 256 four-digit numbers that can be formed. Note that this formula is only applicable if there is no zero digit from the given numbers. Illustrative example number 2. From the digits 0, 1, 3, 4, 6, and 9, how many three-digit numbers can be made if A. Repetition is not allowed and B. Repetition is allowed. Let us first answer the first question. There are three positions to be filled, so we need to draw three horizontal marks. After the first mark was filled by a non-zero digit, you have five choices for the second mark that includes the four remaining non-zero digits and the zero digit. You have five choices for the second mark that includes the four remaining non-zero digits and the zero digit. Since we can include zero in the second and third position, on the third mark, we still have four choices. Multiplying each one will give us a final answer of 100. So there are 100 three-digit numbers that can be formed. Question number two, if repetition is allowed. There are three positions to be filled. Again, we have to draw three horizontal marks. On the first mark, you only have five choices because the zero digit cannot be placed in 100 place. After the first mark was filled by a non-zero digit, you have six choices for the second mark because repetition of digits is allowed and you can include zero digit in the choices. On the third mark, you also have six choices. Multiplying each one will give us a final answer of 180. So there are 180 three-digit numbers that can be formed. Illustrative example number three. How many distinguishable permutations of the word ellipses are there? Since the word ellipses is consists of eight letters, then our n is equal to eight. As we notice, in the word ellipses, there are two e's, two l's, and two s. Using the formula for the distinguishable permutation, p is equal to n factorial divided by p factorial, q factorial, r factorial, where p, q, and r are the repeated elements. So we have 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Since the product of the denominator is equal to 8, we can simply cancel 8 in the numerator and cancel the denominator. By multiplying the remaining numbers, we will have 5,040. So there are 5,040 
distinguishable permutations from the word ellipsis. Illustrative example number four. In how many ways can seven children be seated in a round table? Since the problem already indicated a round table, then we are going to use the formula for the circular permutation where n is equal to 7. Using the formula, p is equal to n minus 1 factorial, which is equal to 7 minus 1 factorial, equals 6 factorial. Evaluating the solution further, it will give us the answer 720. So there are 720 ways. Illustrative example number 5. In how many ways can a family of 6 members be seated in a circular table if two of them insist on sitting beside each other? If two of them insist to sit beside each other, then we are going to count them as 1. So 1 plus the remaining 4 members, then n is equal to 5. The arrangement of the two members insisting to sit beside each other is 2 factorial because they can switch their positions. Again, this is a circular permutation. That's why we are going to use the formula p is equal to n minus 1 factorial, which is equal to 5 minus 1 factorial times the 2 factorial is equal to 4 factorial times 2 factorial. Evaluating the solution further, it will give us the answer 48. So that means there are 48 ways. Illustrative example number 6. Mario bought four different mathematics books, including algebra, geometry, statistics, and trigonometry, and five different science books, including biology, chemistry, physics, natural science, and anatomy. If he wants to put them on a shelf, how many ways can Mario arrange these books on a shelf if A. No restrictions and B. Books of the same subject must be placed together? Again, let us proceed with the first question. Since there are no restrictions, that means Mario can place 9 books anywhere. So that is 9 factorial that will give us 362,808. So the answer for this problem is 362,880 ways. Let us now proceed to the question number 2, where books of the same subject must be placed together. Together means count the same subject as 1. That means we are going to count these subjects as one math subject and these subjects as one science subjects. There are four subjects in math that can be interchanged. So we have four factorial and five subjects in science and that is five factorial. Since math and science can interchange their positions, so it is two factorial. So that means we have four factorial times five factorial times two factorial. Evaluating this solution further, it will give us the answer 5,760 ways. Illustrative example number 7. If Pedro must answer any 5 questions on a math quiz containing 8 questions, in how many ways can he choose the 5 question? Since the arrangement or order of choosing the 5 questions out of 8 questions is not important, that means it is an example of a combination problem. Using the combination formula, CNR is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial, where n is equal to 8 and r is equal to 5. That means we have 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 5 factorial. Evaluating the solution further, we can see that 5 factorial in the numerator can be cancelled together with the 5 factorial in the denominator that will give us 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. Since the product of the denominator is equal to 6, we can now cancel 6 on the numerator and 6 on the denominator that will give us 8 times 7 which is equal to 56. So the answer for this problem is 56 ways. Now try this problem. A box contains 5 red balls, 7 green balls, and 6 yellow balls. 
in how many ways can six balls be drawn if there should be two balls of each color? You can pause the video for a while and answer the problem. Do not forget to leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, subscribe on our channel, and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified on our next upload. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.